Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for this very important uh, committee. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Egerin, for uh, testifying today. I'm going to uh, echo the chairman's frustrations with HHS's lack of compliance and request for this committee. To reiterate, you and the department are accountable to the oversight committee, period. As a side note, I sent you a letter pertaining to colorectal cancer screening test, I would say something very important, on September 1st of last year and have yet to receive confirmation of my letter, let alone a response. It's both unfortunate and unacceptable that you and HHS do not take your accountability to Congress and by the extension to the American people seriously. As I'm sure you know, during the early days of the pandemic, there was a massive shortage of personal protective equipment which highlighted the need to bolster our capability to produce PPE domestically rather than relying on foreign countries, especially China. In response, the federal government committed almost $600 million to bring production back to the United States. I have heard concerns, however, that HHS is dragging its feet on these contracts and is being unresponsive to grantees. Oversight Committee staff reached out to your office on January 2nd of this year to ask for a briefing on this issue, specifically regarding one surgical glove manufacturer whose contract may be in jeopardy and has been stonewalled by HHS. If just one contract falls through, tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars in taxpayer funds already spent on onshoring efforts will have been wasted. While I'm not advocating for one company's products over another, I believe that HHS has a responsibility to be responsive and communicative with grantees for all initiatives. Are you aware of this request from January 2nd of this year, and do you know why this seemingly simple request has not been granted? Dr. Melamix, I am aware of that request, and it is my understanding that there was a conversation even yesterday between the staff about making sure we have that briefing and that we find the right subject matter experts to provide that briefing and work with them to make sure we're not pulling them away from mission critical work, but also being responsive. So then you're committing uh, to this committee that you will have a briefing on the topic? Yes, we are working on coordinating a briefing on the topic. To follow up where uh, my colleague on the other side of the aisle um, uh, just mentioned, um, and you had mentioned in response to Dr. Winstrup that this committee had asked for very broad uh, topics, lab, nature, teleconference. Are you aware of this article in the Wall Street Journal from January 15th of 2024? Chinese lab mapped deadly coronavirus two weeks before Beijing told the world document shows in it you are quoted. Congresswoman, I am aware of that article, and I believe the quote comes from a letter response that we sent back as part of an oversight inquiry. So, and you're aware that this committee has been meeting now, this is the second term that this committee has been meeting, and that we're researching origins of COVID-19 and trying to prepare for the next pandemic. Is it not important if a genetic sequence was released on December 28th, that that would be important to developing vaccines, important to developing testing, and why was that information shared? When did you know? about the sequence, when did HS, HSS know, and why wasn't the committee informed or Congress informed? So Congresswoman, the documents related to this in the letter that you quoted was when we informed Congress when we came across a responsive document. I believe, and I need to double check, that that was provided, hence the letter with that. And as we continue to look at documents that are responsive, we do come across new information, and that is part of the reason we continue to do rolling productions. So you mentioned in this article that you wrote last month to the committee's chair, Kathy McMorris Rogers, that Wren submitted, Dr. Wren of Chinese, this virus sequence on December 28, 2019, to a genetic database, GenBank, run by the U.S. National Institutes of Health. NIAID, as we know, funded EcoHealth. Who is mentioned in this article? Are you covering for EcoHealth and for NIAID? Congresswoman, I am not covering for EcoHealth or NIAID. As I said, when we came across a responsive document, we provided it to, as you noted, the chairwoman of the Energy and Commerce Committee. And we. But you've yet to say when you had access to the document, when HHS knew of this, and why it was not reported. I would say this is extraordinarily important to preparing for the next pandemic. We know that there's immediate disclosure of viruses that can lead to a worldwide pandemic. This affected worldwide nature two weeks before the Chinese Communist Party released information and they had already alerted their own CDC. So I find your response to be uh, lacking uh, and I think it, uh, in 
in fact, creates impediments to us going forward to prepare for the next pandemic. With that, I yield back.